right, welcome back. I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon. Uh, for those of you uh, that have been tuned in, you've been watching uh, our coverage of HBase conference uh, from San Francisco. John Furrier, our colleague from SiliconANGLE, is there uh, covering all the action. Uh, so, you know, this ties in very well with what we're about to talk about, uh, kicking off our big data and data science uh, focus for the day. Um, so I'm joined today by Anika Jimenez, who is, a, uh, who is the Senior Director of Analytic Solutions at Greenplum and Kashik Das, Principal Data Scientist with Greenplum. Uh, welcome. Thank you. First time on theCUBE, so. Yes, thank yeah. you. As, yeah. as Dave, <laughs> our CEO, always says, the first timer, we'll go very gently on yes, you. Yes, so. thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, before, well, as we get started, why don't you tell uh, the audience a little bit about yourselves and uh, kind of your role at sure. uh, Greenplum. Sure, yeah, so um, at Greenplum, I started about a year ago, actually coming off of a fairly extended uh, tenure at Yahoo. Uh, and started at Greenplum really to help kind of build out data science as a service mm. um, to our customers. And that meant um, starting to work with really great existing people on the team like Kashik, um, our principal data scientist who's been spending a lot of time um, thinking about how to really build predictive models on top of the, the Greenplum stack. Uh, and have done a lot of work to scale up the team, productize services, think about solutions delivery, mm -hmm. um, all around much more advanced forms of analytics than what you would typically see in BI, right? Right. Yeah. So I've been with uh, Greenplum for a couple of years, you know, that's when um, Greenplum realized that, uh, that uh, they have a really nice tool uh, for dealing with big data but it's, um, you know, you just can't give someone who's used to working with a nice power tool and expect them to suddenly start using it. It could right? be a little dangerous in fact. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that's where, you know, uh, the data scientists like me come in. So, you know, because um, using Greenplum with big data is not just about answering uh, your questions faster and better, but actually being able to ask new questions. Right. And that's where we come in because you know we see this happening uh, uh, across different customers in different verticals. So we are able to work with the customers and actually um, help them ask the right questions and solve those and give them the right answers. Right, so, so you mentioned, yeah, it's about asking questions versus right. kind of, you mentioned the more traditional BI approach. Yeah. Uh, contrast that a little bit. Uh, from my perspective, the more traditional approach to BI was much more looking back. Yes. Why did yeah. something happen over the last right. several months or right. several weeks yeah. or however long? Right. Uh, and there's been talk for years in the BI industry about moving to predictive analytics, but it's, it hasn't really happened in the traditional world. So yeah. how does that, how does the mindset differ and what's the, how is the approach different uh, from your traditional BI environments? It's so I'll take a first crack and then you can jump <laughs> in. I think, I think what we find is um, customers have been, th obviously, like you said, been thinking about BI for a, a very long period of time and they've um, primarily manifested BI through some sort of reporting layer mm -hmm. um, with um, uh, usually a set of, of analysts that can then take some of the more custom and um, uh, queries against the data warehouse um, to go a little bit deeper against some core questions. and. I think a lot of uh, our customers are realizing that they could take and leverage the data assets that they have within the company uh, in a much more um, profound way than through simple reporting solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, and that starts introducing into the equation a completely different paradigm of, of compute uh, and distributed computing requirements to support that, especially when you're entering into the bigger data realms, when you have you know terabytes and petabyte scale um, data stores, and you're actually trying to do very meaningful predictive analytics on top of that data, that then introduces a need to start thinking about a completely different paradigm when it comes to actual execution. So it's a very different um, kind of workload than what you would see in a more operationalized process around supporting BI. Mm -hmm. It's development-like, it's exploratory. You know, we're going in and working with the data, answering, asking and answering questions and maybe going further, all while trying to yield what ultimately is a model that can actually be put into production, mm -hmm. right? Um, Again, some top priority business use case. Uh, and of course, like Kashik said, um, there are just um, you know, untold numbers of, of ways that you could apply the data um, from a marketing perspective all the way through to um, risk modeling, mm -hmm. um, IT related analytics, et cetera. Right. So you know, one way of thinking about it is that it's not just asking uh, what happened, 
uh, at a uh, very deep level of detail. It's actually going beyond that and asking why did it happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, you know, once you know that, then you can answer the question, how do I prevent that from happening again? Or how do I make it happen more? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Depending on the case. Yeah. yeah. So, so you mentioned um, you know your role as kind of data science as a service was just really intriguing to me because yeah. we, we hear a lot about the kind of dearth of data scientists out there on the market. Yeah. Uh, so walk us through a little bit um, a, a typical customer engagement uh, when you go yeah. on site and and, and yeah. how does that how does that work when you're I'm guessing in a lot of cases it's engaging with customers that don't have their own data scientists on staff. Yeah, like, so it's an interesting, <laughs> we're at this really just fascinating period of time, right? Because I think across all industry or verticals, if you want to think about the vertical markets, retail, finance, healthcare, mm -hmm. energy, et cetera, um, we're finding that our customers are just awakening to this understanding of kind of this, there is opportunity and value in the data that they've been cultivating, maybe over years. Um, and they're realizing that, again, with the right harnessing on, uh, at, at the compute layer, they can actually extract much more value out of that data mm -hmm. than they have in the past. So we very frequently get involved early in the process with the customer. They've They've come to enough of a realization that they want to at least reach out to Greenplum, mm -hmm. um, but very frequently that quickly turns into a situation where we actually have to walk, walk them through almost like an analytical brainstorming session, mm -hmm. right? So we actually bring stakeholders to the table, we come to them with a vision for how they could leverage their data. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about use cases across the stakeholder communities that they're working with. Um, and we actively work with them to prioritize and assess value of those use cases. Um, and so we do all of that you know, in an actual engagement that you know, customers kind of urgently need that kind of support and help. And then of course, once we've done that, they're then ready to start thinking about execution and then we're there to help them with that as well. So is that an on-site uh, no, process, or yeah, do you guys do that? No, yeah, we actually remote in remote VPN into their okay. Greenplum environment. Of mm -hmm. course, once it's stood up in their on-premise in their data center, mm -hmm. um, then the whole team can kind of um, do a lot of the work. And of course, the paradigm is we're moving from kind of desktop-based analytics to right. in database mm -hmm. analytics, right. right? And so that's where we're able to leverage, yeah. Yeah. you know, the billions of rows of data um, mm -hmm. in this terabyte, petabyte scale warehouse um, to yield much higher degrees of accuracy and predictive power than ever before. So, uh, Kushok, are you trying to, when you go into a typical customer engagement, are you trying to uh, essentially, in addition to helping your customers kind of get off the ground with their first implementation, uh, are you also trying to train them to be self-sufficient, or, or is this more of a long-term engagement where you're looking to uh, you know, build a, a long-term uh, consulting uh, relationship with the, cu no, with the and customer. As, as I was, uh, that, that's actually a really good question, and as I was you know, thinking a little while ago, our goal is definitely to teach our customers how to fish, mm -hmm. rather than you know, uh, continue to be their uh, fish catcher, <laughs> so to right. speak. So, and, 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 and you know, uh, continuing uh, what, uh, what Annika said, to add a little bit to that, framing the right questions is really very important, and getting all the stakeholders in the company together is also very important. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, what we do is actually teaching the technology, which actually is uh, not really the most difficult part because it's actually a very intuitive technology. So to give you an example, you know, analysts do logistic regression all the time, and they're used to doing it on the desktop, and something that would take 20 hours maybe before, you know, so the, you just start the model, you go, and you come back the next day. Yeah. So with our uh, platform, that comes down to minutes, mm. you know, like a couple of minutes. And that really expands the amount of things that you can do, yeah. right? And so it's kind of a, it's a revolution, right? It's not just a, a, a matter of degree, and mm -hmm. therefore uh, it's very useful for us to come in and it's uh, sort of, it's more of a, getting people used to a new way of thinking about their yeah. problems and their mm -hmm. data. So right. we have some customers that are actually asking us to not just come in, so, you know, the, the short answer is we want to teach them how to fish, right? <laughs> so we want to do the knowledge transfer right. that's required to fully kind of leverage this this uh, kind of um, strong horsepower that they're getting in, in Greenplum. And the, um, in, in very frequently what we're seeing now is we have customers that in essence are saying they're committed to data, 
they're committed to data science and predictive analytics. Mm -hmm. They realize that they have gaps internally, which we're beginning to help them solve for, but they want to get to the point where they actually have what they might call their own data science center of excellence. Right. And very frequently, they need ongoing help from us to kind of help build and operate, and then ultimately, we hope, kind of transfer ownership mm -hmm. back over to the customer. Okay, uh, so let's dig into some real uh, use case, some examples of some customers you've worked with. What are some of the more interesting uh, you know, kind of engagements you've had that you could share with, uh, with our audience? So, um, like I said, we have use cases across sectors, um, mm -hmm. and they can, they can range from kind of what is, for people who are actually in Silicon Valley and are very used to hearing about data usage in the mm -hmm. digital media space, right? So, it could be working with um, ad, um, digital ad performance data, user level, um, ad interaction with web content to do profiling of users um, to inform behavioral targeting. Mm -hmm. Those are very common um, use cases. But it goes you know, much further than that. It extends immediately into some of the newer areas where you, each of the sectors have their own kind of mini data revolution emerging in terms mm -hmm. of some sort of ubiquitous nature of data. So you have healthcare, where you have a regulatory environment that's changing incentives mm -hmm. to now start thinking about much more meaningful outcome-based analytics. Mm -hmm. you know, looking at treatment of patients through treatment pathways mm -hmm. and understanding if their, their pro, um, kind of progress through those pathways are, is anomalous of some sort or not. Mm -hmm. Which of course then starts enabling you to optimize pathway traversal, identify fraudulent activity, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and we were going to talk a little bit about one specifically within the utility sector, um, yeah, which is yes. also really interesting. So you know, in the utility sector, we are working with um, several cases, uh, particularly there is one customer of our Silver Spring, who are one of the builders of the smart grid, and therefore you know, they have access to all this data. Every household and business, you know how much power they're using every 30 minutes or every 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So what you get essentially is a pulse of economic activity across a city or a region. And that is very exciting, but going beyond that, now you can answer questions like, you know, how do I prevent a blackout? And it's not just how the blackout happened, where the grid started tripping, but it's also what were the sequence of events that happened before right. the blackout. And then going beyond that, you can now set up uh, predictive warnings. Like, you know, if that sequence of events seems like it's happening again, let's set up a warning. Let's take action before it can happen and prevent that. Mm -hmm. And that sort of thing is very exciting. And you know, there are lots of cases like that. It's not just blackouts, it's about theft prevention. Yeah. Or if a tree falls, you know, and then you want, you want to know really quickly what has happened so that you can take action, you can send out the crew. Mm -hmm. And before this would take a long time to do, and it would be very costly and inconvenient for people as right. well. But now all that goes away. Yeah. Right, that's some great examples of new use cases that you couldn't do in the traditional BI world where you'd be looking back and you might say, oh, well, we yeah. recognize that this customer basically stole from us two months ago. Well, <laughs> yeah. guess what, he's long gone. Well, yeah, long it gone. usually took a BI analyst weeks to get access to the data. <laughs> uh, they're right. running some uh, analysis on their desktop and maybe a month or six weeks later they're saying, aha, we found some theft, <laughs> as opposed to actually getting much earlier in the curve and identifying it even, maybe even in the terms of an outage before it actually happens, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. So that's, it's very exciting, that kind of pattern recognition and anomaly detection, mm -hmm. which has applications to a lot of different um, kind of actual use cases right. like theft right. detection, outage prediction, um, uh, treatment optimization, mm -hmm. et cetera, is uh, endemic, it's happening across all the verticals. There's, right. there's an opportunity to apply this notion of pattern recognition mm -hmm across all the different verticals, across different types of data. It's, it's all very exciting. Mm -hmm. In terms of, uh, so certainly across verticals, but are you seeing uh, a lot of interest from maybe the smaller and mid-sized organizations versus the large enterprise? We hear a lot about large enterprises who have the resources and the, uh, a lot of data, uh, but SMBs also have a lot of data. They may right. not have a lot right. of uh, yeah. staff or yeah. revenue, but they certainly have a lot of data and could benefit from some of these approaches. Are you seeing, um, what's the level of interaction or engagement from that in the SMB community and where do you see that going? So I guess I would say, you know, even at the large enterprise level, um, the data science revolution is really just starting. So remember I told you 
a little bit about how we come in and kind of help them establish a vision. Mm -hmm. I think we are needed for that support because they're really just awakening to the possibilities that are on the table for them. Mm -hmm. um, what we're finding is that there are some companies that play very pivotal roles in support of the SMB community that are themselves thinking about how to build analytics as a service to the SMB community. Oh, okay. So you have, for example, credit card tra um, uh, transaction firms, firms that kind of are managing the, the, the processing of credit card transactions. Mm -hmm. You can imagine that that data is very valuable because um, it gives insight down to user level transactions across any sort of um, a retail location, you know, and that can scale in size from very, very small to, to much larger, right? Mm -hmm. um, those transactors, those, those companies that kind of manage the process of approvals and denials, et cetera, of credit card transactions, are in a very interesting position to take that data and add analytics on top of it that's very supportive and helpful to the small and mid-sized mid business community. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where I would see the next logical step. Um, I don't know that I'm seeing a lot of readiness to think about um, advanced analytics from mm -hmm. the SMB community per se. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, for in, in terms of the SMB community, uh, what needs to happen first is getting just the access to all the data, mm -hmm. and it's not just the data that they have, which can often be big data, right. but also data that's available out there, which is accessible to exactly, them. Yeah. You know, for instance, for a small retailer, you know, I mean, even for a medium-sized retailer, not Walmart, there is still a lot of information in just the U.S. Census data, right. for instance, and people are still not using that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but this is what I, we feel strongly is going to happen very shortly because. Technology like ours makes it very easy to access that data. But people are still thinking of the situation a few years ago when it was a lot of work and expense right. even to get that data and look at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that is no longer the case. Right. Yeah. And so do you find yourself doing a lot of education in that regard? Exactly. Yeah, Explaining yeah. some of the possibilities <laughs> and now the new tools <laughs> exactly, and, and hardware, yes. et cetera, advances yeah. that can now, right. now allow you much easier uh, access to storage and compute, et cetera to start performing some of these yeah. big data analytic uh, yeah, Absolutely, workloads. and that's why the brainstorming session that Anika referred to, you know, which often uh, starts our engagement is really important, because people might have heard of big data, or they might have one felt need, but they often don't realize the whole universe of yeah. <laughs> information and insight that's awaiting them, mm -hmm. right? So I guess, you know, it's really interesting. We actually had a graphic, I don't know if, um, if they're able to, to, to highlight it right now, but the idea of this graphic is simply that it is illustrating that big data analytics, we're at this period of opportunity now in the market where any one enterprise can much more centrally harness big data analytics. And the use cases are, like I said, kind of ubiquitous across stakeholders. So you, yes, you have the CMO with marketing analytics and really, um, related kind of adjacent air opportunities, uh, which is very traditionally understood. Um, but you also now have the CIO thinking about how to mine IT logs. Right. You have the CFO thinking about risk and compliance and much more robust models for risk than they've ever had been able to achieve in the past. You have the COO thinking about call center optimization and um, prediction of, of um, the nature of incoming calls and routing them appropriately to minimize um, um, resource constraints, right? So I think there's the, the ubiquity of use cases across, uh, against the available data is, has grown to the point where the opportunity for a company is to actually use data as a source of competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. um, and when we're having conversations with companies in this brainstorming session or even just casually, uh, in the past year, you know, there's been numerous situations where you can almost physically see the light bulbs going <laughs> off in their heads, you know, when that aha moment. Yeah, you, it's like it's it's crazy. It's it's what makes our job really fun, you know, because we're actually trying to be a little bit of the catalyst to that. But um, but it's definitely happening more and more. Um, and and you know, the most important ingredient really is the willingness and on part of the organization. Uh, to believe that they want to make their organizations ready for predictive analytics. And if that willingness is there, then uh, the rest, 
everything falls into place because all the other pieces are already available. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Great. Well, some great advice, some great insight. Appreciate you guys joining us here on the Cube. Thank you. Uh, thanks Pleasure. so much. Yes. Uh, so we'll be right back in, in just a few moments with uh, more big data and data science coverage here live from EMC World on the Cube, and we'll have more coverage also from HBase later, a little later on in the day.